Hey teams, I'm Coach John Burnett, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about a very common gearbox used in FRC. This is not the only gearbox or even the only version of this type of gearbox, but we use this kind very often in a variety of applications. Before we begin, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another episode, and then leave a comment below with your team name and number so we know who's tuning in. Keep in mind that new products come out every year and we're always excited to learn about new technology introduced by vendors. What we are showing here today is the Versa Planetary Gearbox made and sold by Vex Robotics. And today, I'm turning the reins over to our current student mechanics captain, Baylor Paulson, to walk you through how to go from box to working application. Now let's send it over to Baylor and build ourselves a gearbox because this is how we robot. Hi everybody, I'm Baylor, and I'll be walking you through the assembly of a gearbox today. The first thing I want to go over in this video is what a VersaPlanetary gearbox is and why it is used. While motors are what power the robot, they only spin at a specific speed and can only output a specific amount of power before the electric current becomes too much and they burn out. To adjust the output speed of the spinning shaft and change the amount of torque, turning force, output, we use gearboxes. The adjustment of the speed and torque is directly related to the size of the gear being used. While the kit of parts chassis comes with gearboxes from Andymark, these are typically only used with drivetrains. Their large size and weight usually reserve them for heavy duty uses. We are focusing on a gearbox which is much smaller in size, lighter in weight, and also meant for only light to medium duty tasks. First, the planetary gearboxes are a modular gearbox for use outside of the drivetrain. You can change the gear ratio by using one of six reductions or build a multi-stage gearbox by using any combination of reductions. This means you can have anywhere from a 3 to 1 to a 100 to 1 with a double stage reduction. If your team needs more information about what planetary gearboxes are and the use of them, visit our team's guide to robots available through our team website linked in the description below. We are going to start from a brand new unopened box and walk you through the assembly process. Keep in mind we are going to show you the basics for one motor, but there are some small tweaks which may be needed for the motor of your choice. All right, when we open this up, there are quite a few parts which can be found inside. The first thing we want to do is find the correct faceplate to attach to our motor. Here we are using an RS775 Pro motor, so we're gonna try out a few. Notice there's a center hole for the motor shaft and then there are two holes, one on either side meant to line up with the mounting screws. Please note that both bag motor and RS775 Pro have similar mount systems and therefore you need to choose which one is the exact fit for your motor. Know that for SIM, Mini SIM, Neo, and Falcon 500 motors, you will need to shorten the shaft by cutting down according to the manufacturers recommended found on their product's website. The Falcon 500 motor shaft can be changed for a shorter output spline shaft. Because of the special cross-section of this motor's output shaft, a special adapter piece is required and this is sold by VEX. To fit any of these into a gearbox, a special interface piece is required which is also sold by VEX. And now back to our motor. The mounting screws can be found in the bag of bolts provided in the box. VEX provides a large variety of bolts which are intended for the various legal FRC motors as we described in another video. Find the right bolts for your motor and secure the faceplate. Pro Q-tip. Screw in the first bolt just to make contact with the plate, then screw in the other one. Once both are in place, do a final pass of, the, of screwing in both bolts. If you tighten the first one completely, then there will be alignment issues with the second bolt as the faceplate will become bent. Now that the faceplate is on, it's time to attach the first ring gear. This looks like an open circle with teeth as well it is. To get this to fit on the shaft, we need to first find the correct C-clip to fit over our motor shaft. This should be a press fit and not loose. Next, the ring gear has a little notch on the inside. 
you want to line that up that notch with the open space on the C-clip and push the ring gear onto the clip, but not all the way. For a proper fit, the bottom of the ring gear should be slightly above the face plate. Secure this position by tightening the set screw and the ring gear. Now we are going to assemble the other side of the gearbox, the output shaft. Available in a variety of shapes and sizes, we find using the 500 hex output shaft to be the most common and useful version. Then we are going to add stages as predetermined and needed by your design decisions. For the purpose of this video, we are going to add a single 3 to 1 stage reduction. VEX sells these stages anywhere from 3 to 1 all the way through 10 to 1. Reminder from another video that should any large torques be applied to this output shaft, stay away from the 10 to 1 reductions. If you need to use a 10 to 1 reduction, either this should be applied for an intake system where a light load is applied, or use a two stage reduction and put another stage like a 3 to 1 closest to the output shaft. This reduces the stress on the 10 to 1 stage as they will strip easily. For those who are new to robotics, when you add another stage to the reduction, the overall reduction is a multiple of the stages. So a 10 to 1 reduction combined with a 3 to 1 reduction reduces results in an overall 30 to 1 reduction. This means for every 30 turns of the motor, the output shaft will turn once. Also note that you can do a direct drive or a 1 to 1 ratio by having no reduction stages. This would be only recommended in something like a shooter wheel where the drag load on the motor will be small and short in duration. Okay, so let's put together the gear ratio onto the air output shaft gear. Just for the sake of terminology, note that the gears which run on the outside are planetary gears and the one in the middle is a sun gear. Cute, right? When the ratio is in place, we now place the ring gear, which is square black stage around this. You may need to wiggle this around to get the fit just right. Always apply a copious amount of white lithium grease when assembling a new gearbox and give the output shaft a few spins to work in the grease. If you are making a two or three stage reduction gearbox, then go ahead and repeat this step with your other ratios and ring gears. Then there's a special spacer block to put between your final stage reduction and motor faceplate that we made earlier. Go ahead and attach that now. Make sure that all the corners align. There's a notch in the corners to make sure this is done correctly. If misaligned, then this next step will not work well for you. Then the last step is to place the motor with a faceplate and ring gear into that special spacer block. This may require some wiggling as the ring gear needs to mesh with the final sun gear of your stage reductions. Once meshed, the stages should all sit flush with each other and no gaps are present. To lock this in place, we are going to first secure the faceplate to the final special spacer block. The bolts to do this are provided in another box for the gearbox. Another pro Q-tip. Have the bolts in place before you put the faceplate onto the spacer block. The RF775 Pro has an outer metal case which causes some interference with the bolt heads. And the final step is to insert the appropriate length of bolt into the other two holes. Note that the appropriate length depends on the number of stages you used. In any case, be sure that the bolt head sits flush on the back of the face mount and that the tip does not extend beyond the front of the Three. output shaft. Three. Now you have yourself a gearbox complete with a gear reduction and motor. This is now ready to be energized. Watch it spin. To add this into your design, there are several mounting points which can be used. This can be seated flush into a piece of 2x1 box tubing by using the screw holes on the front face of the output shaft. Another option is along the sides of the output shaft are more ta tapped holes for your convenience. VEX also sells gussets which can be used to mount your VersaPlanetary gearbox in many more spaces. As a special note, VEX now sells special stages or output shafts to help in more unique situations. Sometimes the linear nature of this gearbox prohibits you from using the motor where you would like. In these cases, we recommend checking out the special 90 degree stage to take a hard left or right turn in the middle of a gearbox or maybe the 180 degree stage reduction is better suited for you. We on QBranch found uses for both of these styles on our competition robots over the years.
while we walk you through the assembly process of this particular gearbox, note there are many more gearboxes on the market from various vendors. Each of the vendors provides you with an assembly guide to help in the process. With the VersaPlanetary gearbox being one of our most widely used gearboxes on CubeRanch year after year, we thought a video of the assembly would be worth having. Be sure to check with your vendor about the assembly guide to help you through the building process. Thanks for watching and being with us here today. Remember to leave a comment with your team name and number so we know what robots to cheer for this season. And as always, subscribe to this channel to keep finding out more on This Is How We Robot.